good morning yes good morning good morning it's 10 past 8 on uh, oh, Monday the 30th of May and it's a lovely day except that we've had some bad weather go over so the roads are wet I was gonna go in on my motorbike this morning got a little Vespa but I don't like driving on the wet roads so Especially when uh, you'll see in a minute there's building work going on and people leaving mud all over the road and you know it's too it's too easy to come off on a motorbike on wet muddy roads so how are you anyway how are you all right haven't had a video for a while I um, haven't uploaded any for a while but they're all there they're all just waiting we've got some friends staying with us from Canada at the moment and so uh, Obviously, I haven't got any time to do anything much. But uh, went out for a nice meal yesterday. That's the going rate for a, like a nice meal in a gastro pub on a Sunday. It's about £100 for four now. So, consumer price inflation is kicking in. Hot on the heels of uh, monetary base inflation, money printing. So, you know, welcome to the uh, Fanda regime of the fiat money system as it stands at the moment. We've had some interesting discussions. It's amazing when there's no inflation and you start telling people about how the money, the purchasing power of the money is being debased by uh, by the uh, the government sort of printing and just creating IOUs and getting them cashed by the Bank of England willy-nilly. And they, they yawn, you know, they stifle a yawn, but when they're, uh, Petrol's costing nearly two pound a litre, and every, all the food prices have gone up ten percent. Then uh, all of a sudden, they get a bit more interested. <laughs> but for the most part, people are not. Uh, how can I put it? They're not. They're, they're they're grounded really by their education. You know, and that's why I think education is so important. That's why I think education is too important, really, to leave it to the state because uh, the extent to which people understand life even and work it out and build a working model of it which they can then use to forecast what their best course of action is is very much a function of their education and as people have become less well educated um, they have struggled really to deal with all the increasing complexity of modern life at the, the time that education has gone down complexity in life has gone up and it's left a, a you know a whole bunch of people the majority of people I would say really struggling to understand what the hell's going on and it's exemplified by uh, a discussion that we're having at the moment about speed limits and uh, they are there's a campaign to reduce the speed limit to 20 in urban and, and residential areas. And the justification for that is that, uh, twofold. One is that the statistics show that the slower that you're going when you hit a pedestrian, the more chance there is that they will survive. And secondly, the emotional argument that uh, even one child killed is too many. You know, and therefore we should all we should all uh, tootle about just in case a child runs out. Now I've got to say, in these days, you know, when I was a boy, children played on the streets much more, and uh, children running out into the road to get a ball or just being hit by drivers was far more of a problem than it is now. Uh, the only person that's most you know is likely to run out in front of you is some idiot on his smartphone at a red light. But. Um, You know, there's this. Uh, there, there's a big argument from uh, the so-called road safety people to to try and reduce the speeds. And in Wingham, where I live, they have just put the speed limit down to 20. Now, with no enforcement, I mean, everybody's still going through Wingham at the same speed. Uh, the next step will be, I should imagine, to get a camera in and try and you know find thousands of people for doing something they've done for decades safely. Um, but the 
you know, there's an argument that it's a money raising process and it certainly does raise money. But I honestly don't think that it's the prime purpose of doing it is to raise money. I think raising money is just a side effect. I think the uh, the main uh, reason is is a genuine one. But but coming from a, a minority of people, that um, you know, the slower we drive, the better. And that that is simply not true. Hang on, let me get through the junction of death. <coughs> primary cause of road accidents he's, he's just not looking not seeing something that's my empty fuel can rattling around in the back by the way I've started uh, I've got to the point where I'm, I'm buying fuel I've got about uh, seven jerry cans 20 litres so I keep 140 litres of fuel some petrol mainly to E5 which will go in the lawnmower and the and the Vespa as well as the car um, and uh, the rest of it's diesel which will go in this car and the and the tractor but that's not because I'm buying ahead to save money it's mainly because the, there's no security of supply now you know there's there are far fewer petrol stations than there used to be and um, there's a you know a big campaign to blockade refineries and petrol stations by the anti-oil lobby um, and uh, you know our local petrol station just uh, shut down for refitting just completely randomly and uh, they were late to reopen and so we had no petrol for a week or two locally and so um, as a result the lawnmower ran out of fuel the trimmer ran out of fuel the edge trimmer ran out of fuel you know I don't think people understand uh, how integrated fuel petrol is in, into the uh, the fabric of England you know it's all right if you want all your cottages to have hedges all over the place and and long and lawns all vanish and uh, but uh, you know we're not we're not we're not really going to get electric uh, hedge trip clippers in that not not of the sort of capable of the sort of output power that is required it's all very well if you live in a town and you've got a lovely little hedge and you can get electric hedge trimmers for that or if you've got a little garden you know that's about three or four or five or six square meters then that's fine you can get an electric trimmer but when you've got seven acres you can't get an electric tractor that's going to cut that lot so. anyway i was talking about speed limits right now let's i mean for goodness sake let's Please just stick to the septic, all right? So they put the speed limit, I, they would say down to 20. I would say up to 20 because to try and get through Wingham High Street at 20 mile an hour, unless it's three o'clock in the morning, it's not, it's not gonna happen. Because there's already plenty of cars parked both sides of the road. And there's a pedestrian crossing there, which uh, they've uh, obviously then turned into a traffic lights, didn't it? Because uh, uh, people, you know, like to see a car coming on the horizon and then and then press a button to give them priority across the road instead of just joining the Tufty Club and learning how to cross by looking both ways and and then crossing when it's clear. But no, they, they, they need a button. So I'm looking forward to the days when I'll be able to drive through Wingham at 20 miles an hour. But. Uh, I'm a good mind to write to the local council and ask them when I can expect this speed increase. But the campaign to reduce all urban areas to 20, which is called the 20s Plenty uh, campaign, is is using these uh, logical, you know, scientific, quasi-scientific and emotional arguments to try and reduce the speed limit everywhere. And uh, You know, you might say, well, angry, surely you've said something that was contradictory there. You've said that people are more likely to be killed the faster you're driving. And yet speed is not necessarily a bad thing. And the way that it works is this. Like, imagine you're in the back of an ambulance. Imagine you had a heart attack or something, right? You're on your way to the hospital. Your hospital is where you're going to get the care that you need. 
would you want this bloke from the 20s Plenty campaign sitting out the front with a driver saying, keep it down to 20, keep it down to 20, because in case you hit someone, especially with a big heavy ambulance like this, the, uh, 20 if you hit them, they might, they, they're, all, they're almost certainly survive. But at 30 if you hit them, then uh, the, the, the chances are on, on balance they'll die. So, but then, you know, if they, if they were to drive everyone to a hospital at 20 miles an hour, then almost certainly people would die because they wouldn't get the medical attention they need. And uh, there is, there is uh, a flip side to the coin, you know, a bonus where speed brings advantages. It gets things delivered. It moves stuff around. It gets people to work and home from work. It, uh, you know, it's the, the arteries, the traffic are the arteries of society. And uh, they work far better than the, uh, the trains and, and the other, you know, I couldn't get a train to work. I can't get a bus to work. Um, so I pay, and my patients pay, for the flexibility of me being able to afford a means of getting from door to door. So if our 20s Plenty guy had been in charge of um, transport, then we would never have had motorways. You know, he would have never have uh, said, uh, agreed to 70. And we're certainly never gonna get anything more than 70. Now, I know what you're saying, okay, well, there's no, there are no pedestrians on motorways. That's the whole reason why you can, you can drive a 70 on a motorway is because a child is not gonna drive out in front of you. And of course, they know that, and, and so that's why they don't. That's why they use that argument. But it's, you can't drive everywhere at 20 miles an hour, you know. And children could, can run out from any house. And there are plenty of houses on country roads Turning left, yes, you are. Good man. Good man. Good indication. So, and when they get, you know, I suppose when they get their objective and get everybody down to 20, then they're going to start another campaign calling, called Tenny Zen or something, where they're going to say, well, you know, there, there, would, there would be hardly anybody killed if everybody rode, drove around at 10 miles an hour or preferably four miles an hour with a man with a red flag in front. You know, th this what I'm trying to say is that there's a scale, right? Between naught, where nobody gets anywhere, nothing gets delivered, and a speed which is unreasonable under the conditions, which is probably in an urban area would be faster than 30. But at two o'clock in the morning, when there are no children to run out and no balls rolling around, even if they're, they're not, not that there are in the day, but uh, then, then it's arguable, it's arguable that he, then it might be um, reasonable to drive even faster under those circumstances. And uh, you know, they say, oh, well, even at three o'clock in the morning, you might hit, you might hit a nurse walking home from a night shift but they don't they don't realize that at three o'clock in the morning it's likely to be a nurse driving home from the night shift that you're you're going to be holding up or driving to the night shift so there we go 30. a tip actually i picked up of someone who went on a speed course which um actually i'd heard already is that 30 mile an hour put your car into third gear because providing you stick it in third gear like I've got it in now you don't really want to over rev the engines and so you naturally end up driving about 27 28 mile an hour which is fine apart from the fact that I'm obviously consuming a ton of fuel that I didn't don't need to that there was nobody there was there and that um, most cars don't have a third gear now, being automatic, although the newer ones now have speed limiters and so I suppose that's all that. Oh. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, so, um, it's very difficult to be pro-speed, you know. You have to uh, be able to argue the point 
that speed is beneficial under some circumstances. And when you are a nurse and you're exhausted and you're driving home from work because uh, you, you've got another shift the next day, then you don't want to spend 20 minutes, say, driving along, creeping along when there's no one around. Just because there's a camera that's uh, primed to pick you up. Still, you know, people will get the system that they deserve. And uh, if they can't get people to uh, travel, because traveling has become unpleasant, then they'll have to um, reconfigure their... Um... Hello, what's he doing? He's getting out of the thing. Oh no, he's stalled. And his battery's no good. And so he's got a battery generator. So he's he's actually literally electrically jump starting his What? What? What am I supposed to do? Yeah, go on, go on, go on. I know what he's doing. It's no use no use shouting at me, is it? I know he's jump starting his van, it's gonna take two minutes. His trailer's not got the same uh, registration as the van. It's EJ63 X-Ray Delta Romeo, I think. And the trailer's November 200 Tango Golf Hotel. So that's, uh, that's a part of the problem. <sighs> oh well if you have to be zen <laughs> this is why you have to be zen about driving in this country but you can't you know it's like you know everything it's all the same isn't it you can't uh, if you can't uh, influence the system whether it's dentistry or inflation or uh, traffic you just have to try and work outside it. Hello, someone's turning around. Someone's turning around behind me because they've had enough. Now this is good because the, the bloke behind me has been bibbing, he's very impatient and he's now, he's now been told by the lorry in front of me that he's not going anywhere soon and to go round. But to go round he's going to have to go against this flow of traffic on the right. Oh here we are, this is his opportunity, he might try now. No. No, because he's just going to meet another car isn't he, coming the other way. I'm not going up that grass verge and I'm not going that way. And I'd love to, I'd love to give the bloke a hand, honestly, but um, it's a filthy van and I'm I mean, you know, I'm just about to start surgery, so I'm not going to get all black and covered in, in dirt. Here we are. Someone's having a go. Someone else is having a go. Oh, there's lots of smoke coming out.
He's turned round. And we're off. There you go. They've just turned round. And we're going. They didn't see that diesel smoke, did they? Here we are. Here comes another member of the 20s, not exactly enough squad. Well, there's not much about dentistry today. Apart from the general application of the principle that uh, the world's run by idiots and uh, you have to get yourself outside the system if you want to survive almost impossible to change the system from within. I'm going up to London tonight. I'm taking part in a scientific experiment where they're going to inject gut hormones in me, which is entirely voluntary and uh, I'm going to have to stay overnight because it's in Hammersmith at 11 o'clock tomorrow. But being a scientific rationalist and believing very strongly that uh, the human race only advances through advances in scientific knowledge, I feel having been invited to take part in this study. I do feel obliged to participate in it unless I have an overwhelming reason not to. And um, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy, as I say. So uh, the chance to get into London for a few days, uh, or expenses paid, I mean, not, you know, not wages not paid or anything, but at least I won't be out of pocket for my train ticket or for my overnight accommodation. So it's like, uh, why not? All I have to do is just be a lab rat. <laughs> anyway, I'll let you know how it goes. Some excellent parking there. get myself in a parking space seeing as someone's decided to park where I normally park <coughs> anyway that's not a problem Zen <coughs> stay Zen this is the thing right cheerio talk to you later bye